Dear learners, welcome to this course Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustions. We are in module 2 that is Entropy and Exergy. On this module, we are in the second lecture that is Entropy Analysis that is part 2. And in this lecture, we will discuss the following topics. So, first one is uh, Clausius theorem and second law of thermodynamics. In fact, some of these components we have already seen in the first lecture. Then next segment will be irreversible process that is evaluation of heat and entropy. In fact, in our previous lecture, we mostly concentrated on reversible processes. And the third segment of this lecture will be entropy for non-equilibrium states. That means, normally when the entropy is evaluated, we assume that initial and final states are in equilibrium states. And if under those under some circumstances, if that condition is not ensured, how do you calculate the entropy? And the last segment of this lecture will be principle of increase in the entropy or we can say law of universe for entropy. So, let us revisit the Clausius theorem which was stated for a, a reversible cycle in the previous lecture. What it says is that uh, during this particular um, reversible cycle, we consider that the entire cycle is discretized in terms of small segments or the or we can say the closed path of the reversible cycle is replaced with uh, another closed but zigzag path which consists of alternate reversible isothermal and reversible iso uh, uh, reversible adiabatic processes and each one consists of a Carnot cycles. So, likewise we can have many number of Carnot cycles in a you know, for this closed system or the closed cycle. Now, considering this what we found is that the cyclic integral of the parameter d q by t is 0. So, this was the stated as a one of the Clausius theorem for uh, a reversible process. What it says that Clausius theorem states, um, may be stated as the cyclic integral of the parameter d q by t is always 0 for a reversible process. In fact, it is the another form of the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, so, the story does not stop here, but what we can extend this particular theorem is to analyze this Clausius theorem for a irreversible cycle. In fact, this is the uh, main emphasis of today's lecture, where we will consider the irreversible cycle and its and calculates its close integrals. So, to do that let us see this particular figure uh, where uh, which which we, we are basically looking at a, a, a irreversible engine I and this irreversible engine takes certain quantity of Q dQ work uh, dQ heat uh, uh, is receiving and it is producing dW uh, amount of work. But uh, uh, in one sense we can say that in doing so, we can only for this irreversible engine, we can maybe bit of some analysis we can day say that there are two temperature uh, river, uh, reservoir sources only for this irre irreversible engine that produces that takes dq amount of heat at temperature T and uh, but there are uh, this uh, engine also has another partition which says that as if some uh, invisible temperature source at t dash, t dash is sitting onto there where uh, the engine is supposed to reject the heat and it produces the d w amount of work. But what we can see is that when it receives the d q amount of heat, it is nothing but a uh, heat rejected by a reversible engines. So, essentially the entire combined systems if you look at the reversible engine I uh, R receives 
dq on amount of heat from a high temperature source at T1 and it rejects dq amount of heat to the irreversible engines, but this um, and side by side it produces dw amount of work. So, uh, in fact, if you consider this reversible and irreversible engine together, this entire things. So, you can say this is the combined system. So, this combined system consists of the reversible engine as well as the irreversible engine. And if you look at the uh, um, and another important point that I want need to emphasize that for this irreversible cycle that is this. Uh, now, this this d q is positive when t dash is less than t or equal to t when t dash is greater than or equal to t d q is negative. In fact, this is nothing but the summary from, from the second law. So, this is the conclusion what we are going to make. Uh, so, uh, in a sense that when you talk about this combined systems involving reversible engine and irreversible engine, it take it seems that the entire combined systems receives d q 1 amount of heat and it produces d w amount of work, but this is not possible because it violates second law of thermodynamics or Kelvin Planck statements which means that there is no heat rejection uh, systems here. That means, this combined system is interacting only a single reservoir. So, this uh, this is possible only when your uh, that means, if the Kelvin Planck statement is violated. So, for that things, uh, so this must give, give us the conditions that d w cyclic integral uh, of uh, sorry the for this reversible engine d, d w the is less than 0, because and this implies that you, you will also have d q 1 for this reversible engine is uh, also less than 0. So, what we can say the network for the combined systems cannot be positive, because it exchanges heat only with a single reservoir. So, the cyclic integral of reversible heat that is d q 1 cannot be positive. Hence, the engine I must generate heat that flows out of the systems. So, that means, there has to be a another reservoir and in fact, this another reservoir means it is having a temperature T dash and this T dash when is less than T then d q is positive, when this t dash is greater than or equal to t d q is uh, negative and for a reversible cycle uh, this t dash and t must equal be equal. So, same philosophy if it is represented in a mathematical form what we can write, first thing we say that the Kelvin based on the Kelvin Planck statements we can write d w. Uh, integration of dw for this reversible engine is less than 0. So, this means your dq 1 is also less than 0, because this reversible engine is interacting this uh, uh, the high temperature source at temperature T 1 by receiving dq 1 amount of heat and uh, and again only if and when if you talk the temperatures of uh, temperatures reservoirs that this reversible engine interacts is nothing but your T and T 1. So, based on this we can write the ratios of heat to temperature that is d q 1 by T 1 is equal to minus d q by T and in fact, this minus d q science is because this T q with respect to reversible engine it is negative but this is being absorbed by the C reversible engines. So, it is now replaced with negative sign is for irreversible engine if you write this negative sign goes off. So, we can write this as a this particular d q of t now comes here for with respect to irreversible engine. 
Now, from this uh, equations, uh, uh, if you simplify this equations, what we land up is the fact that the for an irreversible engine i d q by t is equal to 1 by t 1 of d q for the reversible engine r, because t 1 is a constant temperature, because it is a reservoir temperature which is constant. So, it is taken out of this integral as you can see here this t 1 is taken out of the integral here and finally, this particular expressions is now written in terms of this important expressions that is cyclic uh, not cyclic that is actually integral of d q by t for an irreversible engine is equal to 1 by t 1 integral of d q 1 for this reversible engines. Now, from this uh, what we can conclude is that here we can as say that since t 1 is greater than 0 because it is always absolute temperature and d q 1 is less than uh, 0 that we have concluded from the Kelvin Planck statement. So, this means that your d q by t must be less than 0 and this is what we call as Clausius inequality. Now, there are uh, two options we have, we have the Clausius equality sign for a reversible cycle. Now, we have proved the uh, Clausius inequality situations for an irreversible cycle. So, for a reversible cycle the integral d q by t is 0 and for irreversible cycle the integral of um, d q by t is less than 0. By combining them together we can frame this Clausius mathematical statement of second law and sometimes we call this as a Clausius inequality. So, it says that the cyclic integral or, um, or the integral of d q by t is always less than or equal to 0. So, the next uh, segment we have is that we have to elaborate more with respect to irreversible process and to elaborate more we need to see uh, the evaluation of heat and entropy and their correlations. So, in order to relate the change in the entropy of heat for an irreversible process, we are now considering a cycle uh, in which the system begins from an initial state i and passes uh, during an irreversible process i to the final state f. So, in then it returns to the initial state. So, what we say here that to analyze uh, this relation for heat and entropy for an irreversible process, we are considering uh, this temperature entropy diagram. So, in this temperature and entropy diagram we are fixing this initial state i first then we are and we want to go that system is supposed to go to the final state f. And since your analysis is focused on irreversible process, so you assume that there is some kind of irreversible process which is denoted by this dotted line and it is proceeding in these directions. Now, but uh, while on return this final stage takes a reversible path. So, this is a reversible path and this is an irreversible path. Now, what we are trying to say that what happens to entropy and heat for this reversible and irreversible paths. So, uh, remember one thing heat is a path function, but entropy is a point functions. So, it depends on the point to point that means entropy is independent of the path. So, we must know that what is the uh, difference in the entropy between the final and initial states. So, that thing that is one point. Second part we need to emphasize that during this reversible path and irreversible path what is the magnitude of heat that is going to change or going into uh, the path that if it is a reversible and if it is not a um, not a reversible. So, first thing to analyze this heat and entropy separately. So, let us first consider this entropy function that is integral of d s and this integral of d s when it is evaluated it is evaluated for the cycle. 
that means for this cycle it goes in this way and comes back to this the in this path. So, this consists of two paths the entropy for this irreversible path i and entropy change for this irreversible path uh, r. So, it the system goes from i to f so integral of i to f d s plus system again goes from f to i integral of d s that is um, for the reversible path. Now, combining this together, so this is what for uh, for you what you write for entropy and uh, what you can write uh, with respect to Clausius inequality from this equations. That means, we can uh, replace this d s with respect to d q by t. So, we can write these two equations, but this cyclic integral of d q by t for this irreversible path is always less than 0. And, and in fact, when you if you put this equation as 1 and this equation as 2, so on subtraction of 2 from 1, we can write that d s this is first term sits here, second term of the first equation it is also here. Then since you are subtracting there is a negative sign here and negative sign for this equation 2 and this must be greater than 0 because in this case it is less than 0 in this case it is greater than 0 because one from 1 to 2 when you subtract this will take a other trend. So, it will be greater than 0, but interestingly if you look at this particular equations uh, and try to find out what by definition of entropy what it means to us is d s integral for this reversible process from i to f is nothing but uh, d q by t for this the same reversible process from i to f. So, this reversible term will get cancelled and irreversible term will remain. So, if when you when you only look for this irreversible process we end up in having this expressions that d s for this irreversible process when it goes from i to f is always greater than d q by t when it goes from i to f. That means, entropy is greater than, greater than the cyclic integral value or in uh, and for the very small changes that means, we can remove this integral. To, uh, so, we can represent in terms of differential form that is d s of irreversible process is always greater than d q by t for an irreversible process or in other words in a general uh, sense that for an any process we can uh, write this particular expression by putting an uh, inequality and equality signs where it says d s is always greater than or equal to d q by t. Now, having said this we are now have many inferences or consequences from our analysis. Okay. So, let us uh, club them together that what happens for, for, for what are the possible sequences. Since we have uh, heat we have entropy. So, the processes that can have is for heat we can think of the process can be adiabatic or the process can be non adiabatic. And the, the again for this heat and when you have uh, this adiabatic and non adiabatic we may have reversible or irreversible. Okay. And seven, similarly for entropy we can say it is an isentropic process that means entropy does not change and it is a non isentropic process. Okay. And these things can be applied for irreversible process or irreversible process. So, this is the basics of this particular analysis. So, we are trying to evaluate mathematically 
what are the different consequences we are going to see. So, first thing we say by definition of entropy, we say d s is reversible heat transfer d q r by t and, and this for a uh, um, irreversible process your d s is greater than or equal to 0. So, here q r stands for the heat transfer that happens in a reversible process. So, first thing and as you all know at this stage that always we use the word isentropic as reversible adiabatic which means d q r is 0. So, this is the truth, but there are other possibilities and finally, uh, with those possibilities we can uh, analyze that only this is the only truth that is possible which means uh, always a reversible adiabatic path means isentropic. Now, let us evaluate one by one. So, first by definition when you say isentropic process we say d s is equal to 0. So, this means d q by t always less than or equal to 0. That means, from d s to d q by t we can uh, say that means, d q by t is less than equal to 0 which means this is from Clausius inequality. But however, when this equality sign will hold good if the process is reversible. So, what are the consequence of isentropic process means because isentropic process does not talk about heat transfer okay. and from this analysis we can say that if d q is equal to 0 which means process is reversible or d q is less than 0 means process is irreversible. That means, from this expressions we have two possibilities either d q is equal to 0 or d q less than 0. Now, let us see the consequence one by one. So, first one if a process is reversible, but isentropic. So, means your d q is equal to 0 and isentropic and d s is equal to 0. So, d q is equal to 0 and d s is equal to 0 means this process has to be adiabatic because d q is 0. Now, second consequence if the process is isentropic and adiabatic process is isentropic and adiabatic. Isentropic means your d s is 0, adiabatic means is d q is equal to 0. So, then it has to be a reversible one which means d q r is equal to 0 or in other words we can write this statement that an isentropic adiabatic process cannot be irreversible. An isentropic adiabatic process cannot be irreversible. So, in a very simple sense we normally refer the same consequence as isentropic process which is nothing but a reversible adiabatic process. Now, let us move towards the irreversible situations. So, the case 3 irreversible isentropic irreversible isentropic means irreversible isentropic means your uh, isentropic means your d s is equal to 0, but it is, but your d q is less than 0 because this will this will come from the Clausius inequality. So, if when I, when I say process is irreversible by but isentropic it is of course, a non adiabatic process, but d q is less than 0. So, which means in an irreversible isentropic process heat always flows out of the systems. So, d q is always negative is less than 0 and fourth category 
if the process is irreversible and adiabatic. So, by irreversible I mean we are looking into Clausius inequality and by adiabatic I mean q is equal to d q is equal to 0. So, if you put this things equation there you will see that if you see d q is equal to 0 and process is irreversible then we can say your T must be always greater than 0 that means temperature always increases. So, in a sense that in a non isentropic process temperature always increases. So, this is the sum of the summary that we come that that has come out from our analysis of irreversible process in the name of heat and entropy. Now, till this point of time whatever we have evaluated it is about the initial state final state entropy heat and we are mainly focused on the equilibrium state that means always we say initial state and final states are in equilibrium state thermodynamic equilibrium that means it is uh, uh, when we say thermodynamic equilibrium all unbalanced force are, are 0 temperature is 0 no chemical reactions all these things are satisfied. But what happens in some situations if it is unable to achieve the equilibrium temp um, states then what is going to happen. So, there are some uh, circumstances in the nature where the equilibrium states it is not possible to achieve the equilibrium states. So, generally the calculation of entropy change is associated with the irreversible processes or with following observations that means, system did not change at all only entropy changes are, the, are for the reservoirs. In fact, for all our previous analysis um, for in terms of reversible um, processes we have seen either system did not change at all but only entropy change that happens in the reservoirs both initial and final states of the systems and, uh, and initial and final states of the systems are in equilibrium states which are suitable for which a reversible process can be connected. That means, if your initial and final states are equilibrium that uh, then, then we can say that we can and actual process is irreversible, but we can connect this actual processes with a reversible one. Okay. So, if this is possible then still that still then also process is treated as irreversible and it is uh, and we can evaluate the properties from the uh, um, uh, initial and, and final point through this data of the reversible process. But there are certain processes that involves internal thermal irreversibility with equilibrium only in the final state or initial state. Such processes are characterized as non equilibrium states and when such a processes are modeled we are um, talking about infinite number of thin slides of volume element of each systems and for which the we have different initial temperature, but same final temperature and when you do this particular analysis it will talk about infinite number of reversible isobaric processes of each slice which may be used to take uh, the, the system from the initial non equilibrium state to final equilibrium state and vice versa. Now, one such example I can give you here. So, whatever we have modeled uh, or talked about in the previous slides if you can simp simplify our thought process it goes like this we have for example, we have a bar I mean a metallic bar which is connected between a high temperature reservoir and low temperature reservoir that is T 0 and T L. Of course, the bar is thermally insulated that means, only heat can be conducted through this bar. So, obviously, what happens is that we can as long as the heat getting conducted we have the, the temperature along the bar or temperature distribution along the bar can be 
drawn in a linear fashion by recalling Fourier law we can find out the linear relations of temperature that is from initial to final temperature with respect to x, x means the length of the bar. Now, your length of the bar is L. So, assuming a, a, a linear distribution of temperatures, we can write this equations T i is equal to T 0 minus T 0 minus T L into a, um, by L into x. So, basically from these equations, we can find out all the intermediate points that joins T 0 and T L and in fact, this equation will talk about the slope of this slope of the uh, line will talk about the, um, the with this that means, from the knowledge of the slope we can find out temperature distribution at any location of the bar. And ultimately another way of modeling this is that uh, when at one instant after some time we can remove both these things we can if you try to plot it and that means, same bar is now kept it thermal insulations, but only difference is that now they are not connected with the reservoirs. If this happens uh, the obviously, since heat cannot come out from the bar we will have a final equilibrium temperature T f and that is nothing but T 0 plus T l by 2. So, this can be drawn as the final te equilibrium temperatures. Now, the same problem we are looking as if it, we have a gross uh, bar, but what we can view is that we can take small volume element from this bar and for this volume element we can actually evaluate the same uh, equilibrium to initial temperature and final temperatures and try to see the entropy. Now, that means for this small element we write d s that is equal to S f minus S S i final uh, entropy minus in initial entropy and this we say this is only for small volume element d v. Once we find this small volume element d v which goes from initial temperature T i to final equilibrium temperature T f the entropy change will be this first we have to evaluate this then we can integrate this d s of this volume element from length 0 that means l is equal to 0 to x is equal to 0 to x is equal to l and that will give you s f minus s i entropy change of the system. So, this is the analysis which we are going to do in one of the problems where we can evaluate the entropy change for in which the uh, the system goes from initial non equilibrium state to the final equilibrium state and that is for an irreversible process okay so after having talking about exhaustively about reversible and irreversible processes we are now uh, trying to frame the principle of increase in the entropy. So, in your previous in our previous lecture uh, we discussed that entropy change for the universe is always 0 for a reversible processes and all natural processes are irre irreversible irreversible, but the change in the entropy and for the is always positive and what are the natural processes which are actually irreversible but we have modeled as if a reversible process can connect between them they are they involve external mechanical irreversibility internal mechanical irreversibility external thermal irreversibility uh, and chemical irreversibility and for all these cases we calculated entropy change of the system entropy change of the surroundings and all these values we say that d s is always positive and in fact, this expression will talk about the uh, that the terms d s of the universe is always positive. Now, we are with this idea and with the Clausius inequality 
we are going to talk about the entropy principle. So, what does this mean that the entropy change of the universe is found to be positive for every irreversible process. Thus, when an irreversible process occurs, the entropy of the universe always increases and we this is called as reposition of entropy, entropy principle, which means entropy of the universe always increases. Now, to prove it in a more elaborate way, we can say that another way of looking at the fact that we can actually prove this is that entropy by, by, by calculating uh, by assuming the second law of thermodynamic uh, th thermodynamics is correct for which the entropy of the final state is always greater than the initial states. If this is true, this has to be true. Uh, so, for that reason we want to ensure that we have some initial state i and we have one final state f. The process goes in an irreversible adiabatic manner that is the pro irreversible process is conducted between i and f, but through this process through this irreversible process we can connect the final state to initial state through and reversible adiabatic process, irreversible iso, uh, isothermal process and reversible adiabatic process. Okay. So, this is reversible, the reversible isothermal process when you do it we can uh, show that the second law has to be satisfied and for that reasons let us evaluate the work diagram which is represented as a x and y in this case which says which, which can be written in this manner that the process for which is i f and when, so when you say i f we say irreversible adiabatic. So, we can write delta s is equal to s f minus s i. Now, you are assuming to connect this final state to initial state in a reversible manner which says goes from f to k, k to j and j to i. So, let us see one by one. So, process f to k the entropy change will be s k minus s i and since, since this process is uh, reversible adiabatic. So, we can say S f is equal to S k right. When you say S f is equal to and for the process k to j. Now, when you are from this process we reach here. Now, k to j we can join in a that means point from the k to j when you go we join we get the point j such that it is achieved through a reversible isothermal process. That means, from the k to j you draw this draw a isothermal curve or curve pro proceeding in these directions and finally, whatever this entropy at i and j are equal. So, whenever wherever they caught it the point j is located. The, that means, for the process j i we can write delta s is equal to s k minus s j. Now, from this we can now conclude the fact that in this entire uh, cyclic process we see that only heat transfer that happens is during this reversible and iso reversible isothermal process that is at temperature some temperature T dash and all other processes does not involve any heat transfer because the processes are adiabatic. So, considering this we can say the only heat transfer q r occurs in the cycle and I have written q r because that particular process is reversible one uh, reversible isothermal process for which we have delta u is equal to 0 which means this q r is nothing but your work transfer w. But the second law puts the restriction that q r cannot enter the systems it cannot be positive because it is interacting with only one reservoir there is no secondary reservoir in which because 
uh, heat interaction takes place at q r at temperature t dash there is no heat rejection. So, this q r cannot enter the systems. So, means it cannot be positive. So, considering this we say this q r is nothing but t dash into s j minus s k is always less than uh, equal to 0. That means, process k to j we can write this expressions that means, which says s k minus s j is always greater than 0. So, already we proved in some sense that for reversible and irreversible process we framed the rule delta s is greater than 0. Here also we proved it for a, a particular systems and finally, it can emphasize that in terms of entropy principle which says that entropy system of the system uh, can be divided into two parts and the entropy change of each part can be summed up. The second one is that reversible process can be found and imagine that they may cause the process to change in the opposite directions. In fact, this was actually represented in the graphically in their previous picture uh, says that in a first thing we assume the entropy change of the systems into multiple number of parts and for each part we can calculate this entropy that is process i 2 f, f 2 j, j 2 k and so on. So, all for all these cases if you calculate this entropy and finally, we, we can when you sum it up it will end up having one particular relations that is delta s is greater than or equal to 0. Now, obviously, we can say now the entropy of the universe delta s is always greater than or equal to 0 and this equality sign holds good when delta s is equal to 0, when this equality sign does not hold good then we say delta s is greater than 0. So, this is the law of entropy or entropy of the universe. So, ultimately we can summarize with following inferences an increase in the entropy of the system is regarded as the increase in the disorderness. By disorderness we mean for a particular thermodynamic processes for example, the disorderness during a free expansion process of an ideal gas means more freedom of movement to a larger volume. The disorderness for an isothermal dissipation of warp heat means increase in the reservoir temperature. Disorderness with respect to heat dissipation from a metallic bar is nothing but the loss of internal energy from an object is not utilized to run an heat engine. For example, uh, another kind of uh, important uh, thing is that heat loss from a metallic bar is viewed thermodynamically as loss of internal energy, but this loss of internal energy cannot be utilized to run an heat engine and this goes as a irreversible loss. And moreover the isolated system that is another definition but entire universe is an isolated system which involves system and surroundings when it experiences an irreversible processes it always moves towards the state of greater disorder which means entropy of the universe always increases. So, this imposes the third law of thermodynamics which says that entropy is to when entropy is 0 this is possible only at absolute 0 temperature. So, the absolute 0 temperature is the basics at which the thermodynamic parameter entropy is 0 and this absolute 0 we say it is about it is 2 minus 273.16 Kelvin and this is this is not uh, an arbitrary state. That means, all of a sudden this number does not come because at this things we say that entropy is 0. Now, another advantage of this entropy is that uh, when you look at uh, entropy it is a point functions and if you recall the first law which says d u is equal to d w plus d q 
Now, d u is a point function but d w and d q are their path functions. So, these are path dependent, but this point function and path dependent they cannot be correlated that is the actual assumption that we make in the beginning, but this is not true because this path function or, or inexact differentials can be written in terms of point functions that is p d b and t d s and t d s here d s stands for the entropy b stands for the volume. So, that means this point function always the relation of the point function is always holds good here even though the right hand side of the equations involving work and heat they are path function. So, it means that inexact differentials of work and heat are replaced with exact differential in terms of internal energy and entropy. So, this is the another significance of uh, the entropy. So, with this we conclude uh, for this lecture. Now, we will try to solve a problem which we have discussed uh, in one of our um, uh, slide which is uh, which we call this as entropy calculations for non equilibrium states. Although theoretically I have explained that things now there is a mathematical problem which says that we have a high temperature reservoir, we have a low temperature reservoir T naught, high temperature reservoir is at T naught, low temperature reservoir is at T L and there is a bar metallic bar that connects between low temperature high temperature and low temperature and there is a thermal insulation in between them. Uh, in the beginning because of this region there is a temperature change from T 0 to T L and this change is happens in a linear fashion. Now, after some times the reservoirs are disconnected and this entire bar is now kept in under thermal insulation. So, that there is d q 2 is 0 for the outside that means, so delta s for surroundings is equal to 0, but what happens to the bar? bar after certain time it uh, assumes the equilibrium temperatures. So, what we see is that initially there is a non initial is non equilibrium uh, initially the system is not in equilibrium state the final state is in equilibrium state. So, to do that what we are going to model this that we are going to create a small element d x and in fact, this is the length of the bar is L and we are going to calculate what is the volume element, small volume element d b and this small volume element can be written as area times d x. And for this small volume element the mass will be because you can multiply density. So, you can say rho a d x. So, it is mass for this small mass we can calculate d q is equal to small c p times d m d t that is m c p delta t. So, d q can be now written as um, c p a rho d x d t. So, there are two integral one is with respect to d t temperature other is with respect to x length. Now, we have already written that the final temperature is T f initial temperature is T i right. Uh, so, we can find out the uh, entropy 
चेंज फॉर दि स्मॉल फॉर दि स्मॉल वॉल्यूम एलिमेंट सो दिस कैन बी रिटर्न आज डी एस फॉर दि स्मॉल वॉल्यूम इस डी एस विच नथिंग बट एस एफ माइनस एस आई आई एम राइटिंग इट फॉर स्मॉल वॉल्यूम एलिमेंट डी वी दैट कैन बी रिटर्न आज साइक्लिक इंटीग्रल ऑफ डी क्यू बाई टी सिस्टम गोज फ्रॉम इनिशियल टू फाइनल टेम्परेचर नाउ बाय पुटिंग दिस डी क्यू फ्रॉम दिस इक्वेशन हियर वी कैन राइट डी एस इज इक्वल टू डी एस फॉर द स्मॉल वॉल्यूम एलिमेंट डी बी वी कैन राइट इट एज सी पी रो ए डी एक्स बिकॉज डी एक्स इज कॉन्स्टेंट हियर एंड वी कैन राइट टी आई टू टी एफ डी टी बाई टी सो वी नो फाइनल वी नो इनिशियल टेम्परेचर वी नो फाइनल टेम्परेचर सो दिस इक्वेशन कैन बी इंटीग्रेटेड सो दिस कैन बी रिटर्न एज डी एस फॉर दि स्मॉल एलिमेंट वॉल्यूम एलिमेंट डी बी वी कैन इंटीग्रेट इट इट टेक्स द फाइनल फॉर्म ऑफ दिस शॉर्ट सी पी रो ए डी एक्स दैट इज एल एन टी एफ बाय टी आई सो यू कैन पुट दिस टी एफ एंड टी आई हियर एंड दिस कैन बी सिंप्लीफाइड एज माइनस सी पी रो ए डी एक्स एल एन टी जीरो बाय टी एफ माइनस टी जीरो माइनस टी एल बाय एल इनटू टी एफ इनटू एक्स नाउ दिस डी बी एलिमेंट दिस इज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू फॉर स्मॉल एलिमेंट डी एक्स देन दिस कैन बी फर्दर इंटीग्रेटेड फॉर द एंटायर बार we can write which is the actual expression for us sf minus si for the system is nothing but integration of ds for the small volume db for the entire length x 0 to l so already you have that expressions now we can integrate it so this is nothing but of uh, integration that is sf minus si for the system is equal to minus cp rho a integration of 0 to l ln t0 by tf minus t0 minus tl divided by l into tf into x into dx so this is if you recall integration of ln a plus bx dx is equal to uh, 1 by b a plus bx ln a plus bx minus 1 by this formula this can be integrated so ultimately sf minus si for the system we can write as cp rho a 1 minus ln tl by tf plus t0 by T zero minus T L divided by L N T zero minus T N into L N 
T L by T 0. So, here all the parameters we have C P 0 0.385 row 8830 then a 0 0.2 meter square length is 1 meter t0 hot temperature 400 kelvin tl 200 kelvin by putting them we can find out SF minus SI each is equal to that is for the system is equal to 0 0.018 rho A C P and this number is 12.2 kilojoule per kg Kelvin and in fact this is greater than 0 we say entropy of the universe is 0 because delta s surrounding is equal to 0 because this is d q is equal to 0. So, this system plus surrounding we say delta s universe is also greater than 0 and that is for a non equilibrium state. Okay, this is what we also prove here and uh, next problem is again in the name of entropy principle what the problem statement is that we have a refrigerator it is to be operated in lowering the temperature of the body from that of surroundings to any desired temperature that means a body which is initial temperature at T 1 is to be reduced to temperature T 2 and in fact, the surrounding temperature is also T 1 and here we call this as a reservoir temperature. So, what we can see that to talk about this entropy principle through a refrigerator, we can connect think about a refrigerator that takes W as heat input work input and to for this work input input and this temperature to be lowered it must take certain quantity of q from this body and when the heat rejected to atmosphere again is q plus w so by framing this we are now able to uh, um, apply this entropy principle which says that delta s universe is greater than or equal to 0 and basically our aim is to find the work of course the refrigerator need uh, some work but we want to find out what is the minimum work so that is the um, question mark so for this entropy universe you have three parts one it delta s body that is nothing but s2 minus s1 because body goes from temperature goes from temperature T 1 to T 2 then delta S refrigerator that is equal to 0 because refrigerator is cyclic device is cyclic device then delta s reservoir and reserve, since it is a reservoir we can write it is q plus w and the reservoir is at temperature t 1. So, by clubbing all together we can write s 2 minus s 1 plus q plus w by t 1 must be greater than or equal to 0. Then when you do rearranging, we can say T1 into S2 minus S1 plus Q plus W is greater than or equal to 0, which means 
W is greater than or equal to T1 S1 minus S2 minus Q. So, this is the conditions that amount of work done by the refrigerator, amount of work requirement for the refrigerator. Now, if this is the situation and the minimum conditions, the question is that minimum work. So, W minimum we can write as T1 into S1 minus S2 minus Q. So, this is the minimum work requirement for this refrigerator by applying entropy principle. So, with this I conclude this lecture today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.